So, Doc Hayden, thank you so much for guesting on my YouTube channel. Good morning, good day. Do yes, you thank yeah. you so much. I know that you're a busy man. You've got like schedules lined up for the rest of the day. Not too busy for you. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Doc Hayden and I, and I have been good friends for a very, very long time. Uh -huh. Once upon a time, this guy was one of the most hated men in Asia. Uh, the most hated man. The, okay, I didn't want to In the Philippines, like, not in Asia. Month. A lot has changed since then. I'd like to think so, yes. What happened? What, how did this big change happen for you? Um, 20, 2005, 2006, 2007, I was having the time of my life. You know, I was really enjoying life. I was, uh, in, my, in my eyes, I was successful. But yeah, I was making lots of money. So I thought, okay, this is the good life. Um, and 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 what I found, it, what I realized back then was that even if you have lots of money, that doesn't bring fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the end of the day, when I'm alone in my bed, my problem was that yes, I have all these things, I have all these pleasures, but I still I still feel lonely. I still feel like I nobody knows me. For for artists, for actors, um, an image of them is created. Okay, people fall in love with that image, mm -hmm. but that image is not you. Yeah. So yes, they they love that image, but they don't love you. Don't you don't feel love because you don't feel known. So anyway, um, what do you usually do when you feel lonely or you, you don't find fulfillment in in money? You look somewhere else, maybe in um, sex or drugs or whatever. So I tried all those things, all those uh, things that are supposed to bring you pleasure and mm -hmm. fulfillment and I found that to be unsuccessful um, so 2008 I tried to take my life and unsuccessful um, because of a huge scandal that happened here in the Philippines 2009 there was a you know an investigation of uh, what happened there was a Senate hearing my medical license was revoked I was in the news every day I was in the news TV uh, radio online channels every day for like two years and then 2009 I tried to take my life away again and for the, the second time second time the reason because it's because I was just really getting frustrated I was just trying to be a good person I wanted to be a good person really you wanted to really change doing my best to be a good person mm -hmm. when you are the problem you cannot help yourself I mean there's some sort of discipline that is required but it, you need something to, outside you you need a transcendent uh, being or factor. That's what happened. Um, 2008, 2009, unsuccessful. So second time, I thought, okay, this is a miracle that I'm still alive. So maybe there is something out there. Maybe there is something, uh, a being out there who actually cares. Not just a being who created, but just a being who actually cares. So I started pursuing the spiritual path again, because I was a Christian. I've been a Christian since, you know, I, I went to a Christian school and I was a worship leader then. And really? I was leading, yeah. Um, and I thought I really believed, but somewhere along the way, pride kept in and I mm. thought, oh, I don't need God, I'm successful mm. by myself. But basically, what did I do? You didn't really know him <laughs> back no, then? No, maybe I just rejected him, mm. just plain out rejected him. Okay. okay. Did not consider him to be important in my life, mm. so I went my own way. Anyway, that all failed, um, so I tried to seek that being again, so first thing I did, 2010, I put myself into rehab for four months. Drugs and psychological rehab and all that, but mm. that did not work. And then I went to Arizona um, for a month. We would meditate on top of the mountains for, for 12 hours every day. It was just crazy. And then that yep. did not work. I had more nightmares. Basically, I still did not like myself. So, um, 2013, I, was parang, I already gave up. But that was the day that when I finally gave up, that was the day that God moved. Maybe, maybe God said, okay, you're done. Are you done trying? Can, wow. I, can, I, can, I, can I try now? And then lunchtime, a friend of mine called me. He had two tickets to this, this uh, dinner talk mm -hmm. that he bought. So I went. I went. And, um, and so Giselle was very gracious. He sat with me. He felt, made me feel comfortable um, because I was surrounded by you know, like oh, yeah. questions. But... I'm glad to say that uh, in that room, they're really Christians. Mm. <laughs> they were looking at me, yes, but they did not make me feel super unwelcome. And then there's this guy who arrived, Ravi Zacharias. Oh, 
Wow. Okay. okay. Uh, I did not know him at that time except that I read his book. Um, he had a book. He wrote this book, Has Christianity Failed You? That's the title. Mm -hmm. And I read that because I felt that um, Christianity failed me. Mm -hmm. So after his talk, I, I was, you know, I didn't know that there was a Q&A, but I raised my hand immediately and I said, Dr. Ravi, you have a wonderful talk uh, that I learned a lot, but I just let me ask you this question. We as human beings have been in this in this world for generations and generations and until now we still don't know the truth. Mm -hmm. So how would you expect me in my three score years and ten, in my 60, 70 years, how would you expect me to find out the truth? I remember he said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Mm -hmm. I, said, I interrupted him and said, Dr. Abby, that's very all good. I've heard that before, but honestly, I don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. He asked if he could talk to me after the, after the dinner. So that's what we did. After that, we talked and he invited me to, to, to join him in his trips. He's an itinerant yeah. speaker, so he travels all around the world. So he goes to Asia a lot. So he invited you so to invited join me. him for... So what I did is I left everything. So I left everything and I traveled with Dr. Ravi just to really understand what the, the gospel really is. Mm -hmm. Why is the good news exciting? Why is the good news good? What is there and how, how, how will it help me? Mm -hmm. And then that's when I realized that um, you know when the gospel, the gospel is very kind of simple but it's very profound. Everyone else, all the other systems of thinking, seculars, new age, whatever, will, try, will tell you change the way you think, change, change the experience that you pursue, change your way of life and you can change your being. Yeah. Jesus is the only one who says, give me who you are and I will change it, I will create something new. You mm -hmm. can be born again. And once you're born again, through the Holy Spirit, you will, your thinking, way of thinking will change. The experiences you pursue, your, the desires that you have in your heart will, will change. The way you do things will change, all by His grace. Mm. And that was completely, very profound, very unique, and mind-blowing mm -hmm. at the same time. Because it's very unique. So that's what happened, and I followed that route. And here I am now. Am I happy? Am I, assess, am I making as much money as before? No. Am I, do I have um, that many acquaintances as before? No. But am I content with, my, with how much money I make? Yes. Am I content with the, the real friends that I have? Very. I had, now I have my family, I'm married, I have Scarlet Snow, such mm -hmm. a blessing to, not just to me, but also to, to Vicky and to a lot of people. And, and I am very happy. Mm -hmm. I also learned that you, in life we are not made happy but by, by what we acquire, but by what we appreciate. Mm -hmm. And right now I appreciate all the things that I, got, that I have. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a secret to happiness. So when you would... Oh, sorry, that was a monologue. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's all right. Um, this is all about you. When no. you <laughs> well, you know, your testimony, your story. So, you know, when you said the word born again, mm. Um, so many people get turned off by that because, mm. you know, it's given this perception that it's 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 a cult, it's a religion. I mean, mm. can you explain to them what it means that the phrase "born again"? A born again Christian, basically, forget about born again. But for let me focus on the word Christian first. Mm. Who is a Christian? Follower of Christ. A Christian is someone who follows Christ. Well, what does it mean to be born again? To be born again means not to be. <laughs> Of course, the best way is to read scripture, no? uh, look, look it up in the book of John. Um, but to be born again basically is to be born in the Spirit. It's like God, uh, when you accept Christ into your life, mm -hmm. He begins to change mm -hmm. things about you. So, um, what Jesus is saying is that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And with, apart from me, you're dead. Yeah. There's no life. Okay. Um, real life is when you are back in union with God. Mm, so that's why so born that's again. Spiritual. Would you say that after you joined uh, Dr. Ravi on his trips, did he spend time with you? He did, did every day. I think the discipleship is very important. Mm. Um, I think the success of the Christian life is based on discipleship and accountability. Mm. What course. is discipleship? Basically mentoring, um, going deep? Discipleship is basically, yes, it's basically mentoring mm. and helping the younger Christian um, walk faithfully in this Christian walk, which is this narrow path, you know, and to help him understand the scripture. Did you say so, accountability? 
and accountability is also very important. No, we're not meant to, you know, no, no man is an island. It's mm -hmm. not in the Bible, but yes, no man is an well, island. Well, th the reason why I point this out is because you mentioned, like, before this change you had, you try to do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. Self-help books mm -hmm. and all these things, and then you would go on retreats, solo retreats, Arizona, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden there's this guy, mm -hmm. much older man, you d that you know from nowhere yeah, no way, yeah. who becomes your your mentor your mm -hmm. you know and so when you say accountability um, I think that's one of the key for me uh, one mm -hmm. of the key principles in um, getting to maturity mm -hmm. um, is by having somebody speak into your life and you that's tell true. them everything about that's what true. you're going through that's your true. the good the bad the ugly the struggles and so that person can, you know, the more open you are, the mm. more, the deeper, mm. you know, you can mm. go in the relationship mm. with mm. God because mm. you have to account, you have to answer to somebody. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing about accountability is it's easy to find someone who you can be accountable to. Mm. But my, my, what I've learned is that when you're choosing someone, an accountability partner, mm. you should choose someone who's gone through lots of challenges and trials mm. but still managed to remain faithful yes because i know a lot of people who are accountable to somebody but that accountability partner is just all as messed up everyone along the way is going to mm. fall short mm. Mm. you know we, we're all you know uh not perfect mm. and so on but then eventually down the road you, you know you start to discern or know like oh this person has their shortcomings, yeah. but as long as you focus your eyes on yeah. your relationship with God and, and of course, reading the Word mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. So would you say that um, now, the person that you are now is, I mean, are you grateful for the past because it's brought you to yeah, where you the, are now? Of course, of course. Um, I think the, all the challenges that we face uh, whether we're Christians or, or not, but especially as Christians, mm -hmm. are meant to really increase our faith. So I think where I am now and um, um, the learnings I have wouldn't have been possible if I did not have that experience in the past. And I wouldn't be able to help other people with their struggles if, if that did not happen, if I, if I didn't go through that. They say that in, in love service, wounded soldiers serve best. Yeah. And I feel that because of what happened in the past, I am one of those wounded soldiers. And because I went through those things, I can minister, help, advise, be disciple, mentor others who are going through the same things. Yeah. And I went, I went through a lot. The reason why I'm also smiling is because, you know, you've been about eight months married now. You have a three-year-old daughter. I mean, isn't it a great place to be to know where you've where you've come from of course, of to course. now you're the the leader of your home and you're passing the baton on to the next yeah, generation in, in scripture you'll notice that whenever they they name their kids they the names always have meaning scarlet scarlet snow her name actually came from the verse isaiah 118 mm. which is a reminder to myself to others isaiah 118 says though your sins be red as scarlet I shall make it white as snow. Make it white as snow. He can make something marvelous, amazing, brilliant out of it. And, and that's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I became a Christian, and because of me, Vicky became a Christian. Um, and, and, and now we have the Scarlet Snow, who's just. The Scarlet blessing. Understand, you know? Yeah, she, you know, you ask her, ask her, what is the number one rule in the house? And she will tell you the number one rule in the house is to love God and love one another. How has the response been to you? Has there been any negative feedback the, ever the since? The response then? is not to me, the response is to God, and I'm very happy. Mm. I, um, you know, in John 3.30, it says, He must increase, I must decrease. And I think that's really what's happening. Uh, the best compliment that I've ever received um, in sharing my testimony is when somebody told me that, you know, Hayden, can you tell me what you did and who God really is? Because if He can do that to you, then He can mm, do that to me. Yes. And that is not about me. That mm. is about God. Thank you so much for indulging me by watching the second episode with Dr. Hayden Co. If you liked it, I hope that you could subscribe to this channel so that you can be notified of any future posts. And also, please do make your comments in the comment section. If you have any questions uh, about what we discussed, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you on the next episode.